Now, the economic activities of developed nations in creating new economic concepts and policies to limit the damage of the effects of COVID-19 on their economies is an instructive one. It is postulated by some economists that if the tables turned and African countries were printing money and distributing cash gifts directly to their citizens, the IMF and the World Bank, which are indigenous economies, would cry foul. There is a long-held uh, conviction among some economists that Nigeria must develop her own original and tailored policies for real economic growth. These experts believe that the COVID-19 pandemic combined with the slump in crude oil prices has driven home this need. Experts have also postulated that the Nigerian economy will suffer significant adverse effects due to these events with potentially catastrophic consequences unless we make major adjustments. Joining us via phone is the Senior Special Assistant to President Buhari on Public Affairs, Ajuri Ngalale, to take a look. Good morning, Mr. Ngalale. Good morning to you and good morning to our viewers. Thank you for joining us. Uh, now we it's a privilege. We hear talk of resetting our economy. How easy is it seeing as our economy didn't start suffering challenges due to COVID-19, but long before that? Well, indeed, you're very correct uh, in your assessment. Uh, and that is why it's very crucial for us to have used this opportunity. You know, you've heard a lot of us, uh, you've heard the vice president, for example, the president, uh, and many other officials allude to the notion that within crisis, there is great opportunity. And for us, what that means in specific terms is for us to be able to deal with those decades-long deficiencies, those frailties across sectors uh, in terms of our infrastructural frailties uh, in such a manner that we can come out of uh, the COVID-19 pandemic uh, much stronger than how we went into it. So this has now allowed us, uh, has given us the kind of political uh, consensus across the National Assembly uh, in, the, in the executive to say, look, let us craft a stimulus that can attack poverty in a direct fashion, in an immediate fashion, but in a fashion that allows us to deal with these uh, decades-long challenges of power, of housing, of uh, roads uh, rehabilitation and reconstruction, uh, the issues of uh, off-grid power in particular, so, uh, solar power uh, utilization, uh, and of course also the issues that uh, surround, uh, you know, the development of, uh, you know, sustainable uh, direct uh, social invest intervention programs uh, beyond what we have already done, scaling those up uh, in a way that's very sustainable. So there are so many different things that we're looking at, but the key comes down to addressing these, uh, these long-held infrastructural frailties uh, across sectors. All right. Now, Ngalelo, what of the plummet of oil prices and its consequent fallouts? Are we not in danger of playing down the significant catastrophe that this could pose as we seek to exit the COVID-19 storm, hopefully? Yeah, thank you very much. First of all, we're, it certainly we're not uh, we're not going to play that down. That's a very uh, it's very central to our ability to uh, fund the kinds of interventions that we want to make. Uh, when you see the oil uh, revenues, uh, you know, having crashed the way that they have, we're now seeing, of course, a very steady rebound uh, as a fallout of the OPEC plus deal that was struck. Uh, between Russia, Saudi Arabia, the U.S., Mexico, obviously us being involved there as well, uh, and the cuts that were made. So now you're beginning to see with the reopening of economies globally, you're seeing that rebound in the price. Now that has enabled us to move the uh, proposed benchmark of the 2020 uh, budget amendment uh, from $20 per barrel to 25. And we're very optimistic that as we're getting to, as we get to the end of the year, uh, that we're going to be well above the $25 benchmark that we've set. But look, this is the reality. When you have the oil price crash the way we've seen it, uh, the priority now is ensuring, and we have done this very effectively over the last several months, is we have removed all non-essential spending from the 2020 budget. You're not going to be seeing the kinds of non-essential spending like the construction of liaison offices and guest houses for MDAs. You're not going to be seeing the, you know, the the year-on-year -year expenditure of uh, on the laptops and all these other things that people can manage for more than a year, more than two years. All the all this funding has been now directed uh, toward those critical job, uh, you know, creating uh, projects that would that would deal with our infrastructure in a manner that 
that adheres to Executive Order 003 and 005 as it relates to those quotas on, on indigenous participation, not just in terms of content, uh, human content, but in terms of even the, the ingredients, the raw materials that we'll be using to construct the roads as part of the Economic Sustainability Committee's plan, uh, chaired by the Vice President, constituted by the President, uh, has, has to do with how we're going to ensure that from top to bottom, everything that is involved, that it's Nigerians and Nigerian hands, Nigerian feet and Nigerian minds that are rebuilding this country uh, across sectors. And that brings me to my next question, which is how will these proposed policies or strategies ensure that the average man or woman or even the majority of people living in poverty are empowered and experience an economic paradigm shift? Yeah, you know, that, that's priority for us. So I'm going to just take a moment to break this down very quickly. When you, when you look at, let's start with agriculture. Within the Economic Sustainability Committee's plan, you know that the, the Economic Sustainability Committee has, the, uh, the, of course, the vice president chairing, but it also has all of the key economic managers. You're talking about the CBN governor, the NNPC GMD, the minister of finance, budget, and national planning, and the ministers also of the very key high-volume job-creating ministries like agriculture, uh, trade and investment, of course, is involved there in terms of coordinating the management and, uh, of MSMEs. Uh, you're looking at transportation, works, and all of that. So now, if you start from agriculture, we're going to be able to create millions of jobs by a massive uh, scale of land clearing and cultivation. You know, over the last five years, we have made so much progress in terms of import substitution on, on value chains like rice, wheat, fish, sugar. Now we want to move very decisively into those uh, value chains where we have had regional comparative advantage, where we were once a major international exporter in, in value chains like cocoa, right? So for us to be able to move into these value chains that have been neglected for the last uh, 40 years or so, uh, what we have been able to do uh, is that we have now gotten uh, the state governments to sign off on giving us massive hectares of land across the country, we will now bring in young people who will do massive clearing exercise, massive cultivation uh, of, these, uh, of these lands uh, to develop these specific targeted value chains, such as cocoa, such as beef, such as dairy, and some of the other areas that we want to move very aggressively into, not just to sustainably employ our young people, but also to reposition our economy expeditiously uh, to diversify into our export earning uh, portfolio well into uh, agriculture. That's just one measure. One of the very strategic uh, aspects of having the vice president chair the Economic Sustainability Committee is that he's also the chairman of the National Economic Ch uh, Council, where you have the steady six state governors across all lines who, have now, uh, who are now working very closely uh, with the vice president and his team to ensure that all of the interventions that the federal government is making, it fits hand in glove with what the state government requires or state governments require so that we can now have an effective intervention that will reach down sustainably to the ward level to answer your question about how we're going to get our citizens, our residents of all the states involved uh, in, in this plan. Now, aside from agriculture, we are working very uh, assiduously uh, within the Na National Agency for Space and Engineering Infrastructure, NACENI, to develop in conjunction with our technical partners new off-grid home uh, solar-powered systems that will enable us to provide off-grid power to so many of our people, about 5 million different solar power home systems is involved uh, in this program. All right, Ajuri, so you, unfortunately, yes, this is the much we can take. Uh, thank you oh, so okay. very much for your time, and do keep safe out there too. I look forward to joining you again. You, you keep safe as well. Thank you very right. much for the time.